um, I want to go straight into the word. And I, I asked the Lord, Lord, um, what do you want me to uh, talk about it? Um, I know that we are um, doing the series um, on offenses, um, but uh, um, we're going to continue next week. But I was yesterday. I had the, the privilege to be in the in the main house in our main house, and I was teaching a class, and uh, it ministered to me so much that I was like, you know what, I, I gotta bring it to the congregation. Um, I think that everything that happens in the church, everything that happens in our life, is the result of God's love. Is the result of God's love. So anything could happen today. I'm going to say it again because it's like anything could happen today. So when you encounter the love of God, when, you, um, when God's love is present, miracles are present, powers is present, deliverance is there. But the problem with the church is that we go after all those things before we go after his love and it's the other way around those things those manifestation is the result of how much god loves you tell your neighbor god loves me i gotta get used to preach from up here with this whole remodeling thing um so if you see me jumping out of here just bear with me and pray for me <laughs> all right um john chapter 3 verse 16 anybody knows that verse john chapter 3 verse 16 Right? Not everybody at the same time. I, I, if you call yourself a Christian, you should know this. I mean, that the Sunday school teachers are like, like the, the Supernatural Kids Church. Those like, Pastor, if they don't know them, send them to us. Send them to <laughs> For God, say with me, for God so loved the world. You have it right there. Come on. That he gave his only begotten son. That who I, I love. I love how sync we are. Let me just read it. I, I, I read it. <laughs> Let me just read it. I'm like, my mind is going all over. <laughs> okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everybody knows about this verse. Everybody have read this verse, memorized this verse, but we hardly understand this verse. And as simple as it looks, it's so profound. One day that I was going through, I was praying about this, and the Lord brought the scripture, and the Lord told me, you want to know how profound my word is? Read it. And I was like, well, Lord, um, what I understand is that you love me. And he was like, yeah, that's the basic. That's just the surface. But go deeper into it. And I was like, Lord, show me how deep, it is. How deep do, do I need to go. And he goes like, would you crucify Daniel? And I was like, whoa. He was like, would you crucify him? Would you turn your back on him when he is fulfilling his purpose? Because he is carrying the sins of the world upon him. And I cannot even help him. And I was like, wow, Lord. And he was like, so when you read about my love for the people. And about me giving my children, my, my son, I'm sorry, for me giving my child for them, is I'm giving my life. I am giving everything about me for them to be close to me. And I was like, wow, Lord. So many times we talk about love, but we don't understand the, the, the depth of love. Especially the love of God. Say with me, the love of God. So the love, love as we know, is totally different than the love of God. How many of you guys have heard somebody say, I love you? All the time? Thank you. That's because I love you with the love of God. <laughs> all right. But listen, how many of you have heard somebody say, I love you? And all of a sudden, they turn and they backstab you. They criticize you. They judge you. They put you down. They leave you hanging. They run away from you. Young people, lift up your hands. Listen. That word love. I'm about to preach right now. 
Young girls, the word love among young people is thrown out there for the only intention to get in on your panties. So I want to teach you the true love of God. Because you need a man that loves you with the love of God and not with the love. Be my God. Church, I want you to understand this. Everything that God did, God the Father did for you and I, was not for him to, oh, I'm just going to create the world. Even in the creation, you see the, the love of God. The, the, the earth was void. It was empty. It was a mess. And the first thing that God did, he started organizing the earth. So he could place somebody that he loves in it. Everything that God does in our life is the result of his love. Are you here this morning? All right. So why is it so important for you and I as a church to know about the love of God? First of all, if we go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And it says, and we have known and believed that the love that God has for us, God is love. Say with me, God is love. And that he who abides in love abides in him. And God in him. Bear with me. I'm getting excited now. I got to tell you guys this. If you say that you love God, if you say that you love God and you know that God loves you, you need to abide in that love. In other words, if you don't love with the love of God, you are not in God. It is important for you to understand God, that God doesn't have love. He is love. Boom, you're not hearing me. So, I put it to you this way. When you say, I have God, you are saying, I have love. When you say, I have God in my heart, you're saying, I have love in my heart. That's why it's important that you understand what kind of love do you have inside. Because there are different kinds of love. But Pastor, but I tell you, we're going to continue with the series on offenses. That's great. But God cannot take that offense away from you if you don't understand how much he loves you. Are you here? I drink the coffee and Daniel gets all the effects. <laughs> Listen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He who does not love does not no God. So, why is it important that I know about the, the love of God? Because if you don't love like he does, you don't know him. Because he is love. Now, love, it is the person of God. Love is God. Love is God. True love originates in God. Outside of him, there's no true love. So anyone that tells you that they love you, but they don't have an encounter with God, they're loving you with a different kind of love. They're loving you with a conditional love. That's why it's so easy for people to walk away from other people when they get hurt or when they don't get what they need. Because it is a conditional love of God. Can I tell you something? God will not walk away from you even if you walk away from him. God will not stop loving you even if you stop loving him. It is not in his nature because his love is different than the love that you and I are, that we know about. 
That's why he was in that cross. He was being nailed to the cross. His back was turning to pieces. A crown of spike was it pierced his head. Like it, he was destroyed. He was disfigured. And some way, somehow, he found in his heart to be able to cry out loud, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, you're telling me that a Roman soldier that trained all his life didn't know what he was doing when they were whipping him. Are you going to tell me that a Roman soldier didn't know what, the, what the, the spear would do when he pierced Jesus' side? You're telling me that they didn't know what they were doing when they were mocking him. They knew exactly what they're doing. But the love of God will always find the good in people regardless of how evil they are. If God didn't look at us with the eyes of love, you and I would be burning in hell. Because we were a mess. We were destined to go to hell. We are, you say, well, pastor, I haven't killed nobody. But you lie. You were jealous. You had envy. We all done things that we are not uh, proud of. But when he looked at us, he saw us with the eyes of love. He said, you know what? I'm going to find something good in Yvette. I'm going to find something good in Travis. I'm going to find something good in Jerry. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you've done. I don't. And when people look at you and they see, how can God love such a sinner? That is the answer. He always finds the good in evil. As a matter of fact, one of the most powerful verses in the Bible is when God says, I turn evil into good. Because that power only originates from a place of love. Say with me, love. So why do I need to know love? It's because if you don't know the love of God, you don't know God. How is this love different than people's love? Number one, his love is unconditional. His love is unconditional. There is no condition to love you. Well, I, I, I think I'm still a little bit immature, Lord. So when I get a little bit more mature, I'm going to come to church. No, he loves you with all, your, all of your immaturity. Lord, but I'm a mess. Would you... You know, like, I'm a mess. I still love you, son. But Lord, look at the things that I've done. A lot of people hate me, but I don't. Are you here this morning? So, his love always seeks the good in people. God sees the best in us. Say with me, the best. Even when no one else I was sharing with the class. I have shared this with you guys. But yes, I was telling them that I was 12 years old. I was younger than my son, Daniel. Drunk in a sidewalk right in front of my house. When this elderly gentleman came to speak to me for the first time about the love of God. I was so disrespectful to that guy. I tell him, if you speak to me one more time about God, I'm going to punch you on the face. Super disrespectful. But you know what really changed me? He looked at me and he says, take your best shot because I am not going to stop telling you how much God loves you. I took a shower, changed my clothes, and went to church. And the day after, I surrendered my life to Jesus. Because I have never met such level of love. He could have said, oh, you're so disrespectful. You shouldn't say that. But instead, he said, if you want to hit me, hit me. But I'm not going to stop telling you how much God loves you. Love of God 
is different than any love that you and I have ever experienced. Are you here this morning? So listen, the love of God, why is it important? Because the love of God is not just for you. See, that's the problem with people. We come to church and we take the love of God for us. Glory to Jesus, there's nothing wrong with that. But you don't take it home to you and just keep it in a capsule for you. Oh my God, I'm so loved by God. No, no. Nothing that you get from God is just for you. The Bible says we give by grace what we have received by grace. And if you don't know what grace is, it's, something, it's to receive something that you do not deserve. You and I, we didn't deserve love. We di but you got it. How many of you guys can say, I got the love of God when I didn't deserve it? And then, why do we deny the love of God to those that don't deserve it? If the body of Christ will make the difference, churches will not be fighting for members. If the body of Christ would understand this principle of, of, of love, churches would not be criticizing each other publicly through a sermon. You guys have heard me say here, there are many churches in, in Broward. I could care less how they run their church. This is my church. You are who I am responsible for. The rest of the churches, that's between them and God. I don't answer to God for all the ministry. I answer to God for what he has trust me. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we have seen the attacks of the enemy is because we started praying for the city and the pastors of the city. Because the devil fights unity. Hmm. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. He says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That's the message. Can I pray for you? Yeah, but pray for me if you love me. Don't pray for me just to be seen by the pastor. I know people that go out there and evangelize, and when they testify, they say, oh, we went out there, we snatched a hundred souls, and, and glory to God because I pray and I give him a prophetic word, and, the, uh, and, and, and then the person fell down to the feet. Where's Jesus in the picture? I don't need to know what you did. I need to know what Jesus did through you. That's what the Bible says. But Lord, in your name we cast out demons. We, we preach. We prophesy. And the Lord said, get away from me, you wrongdoers. I never knew you. Maybe your pastor knew you. Maybe your mentor knew about you. But did Jesus know about you? Because he will know his nature in you. He will know if what you did was an act of love or an act of seeking recognition. Hmm. So once you understand the love of God, then you will have access to the rest. People, I remember there was a season in King Jesus' ministry. For those of you that are new, literally, Diamonds would show up in the sea. People would lift their hands and oil would drip out of their hands. Anybody live those moments? But you want to know why that stopped? Because people would come into the church looking in the chairs for the diamonds. They were worshiping and every five seconds they would look at their hands to see if there was oil in it. They miss the point. The goodness of God is the result of his love. When you seek to love him and to get his love, 
everything else will show up. You are healed because God loves you. you. There's a breakthrough in your life because God loves you. You are prospered because God loves you. You are delivered because God loves you. You have encounters because God loves you. You feel the presence of God because he loves you. It's not the other way around. Oh, I know that God loves me because I was in the presence of God. No. You were in the presence of God because it was the result of his love. But that's not the proof of his love. Are you here? I got to get so used to being up there, but it's more intimate. The 9 a.m. is more intimate. Listen, we love Oh, we are called. It's not that we love. We're supposed to love. But how many of you guys know and say, Pastor, it's definitely not the love of God and that brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pastor, you don't know them. But if you like that saying all those things, oh, you're also in trouble. Because with the same measure of faith, with the same measure that you judge yourself, we judge. So if you're already talking about the lack of love in your brother, you're already showing your lack of bro uh, love. <laughs> so you love others the same way that you have been loved by God. Don't try to put your, your, your two cents in it. Love the same way that you were loved. How many of you guys know that God loves you with all of your garbage? Then love your neighbor with the garbage. Period. You would... <laughs> Those that love God with the same love that God loves us, we, they would not love him. I, I put it to you this way. When you learn to love God the same way he loves you, you will love him for who he is yeah. and not for what he has. Yeah. When we first got into the ministry, there is a principle in mentorship where some way, somehow, God uses your mentor to bless your life, right? And there was a point in my life where God gave me the privilege to walk next to a man of God like Apostle Tommy, like my spiritual father. And, you know, these people carry a lot of weight spiritually. And I had to check my heart. Am I serving alongside them? Because of what they have for me or because I truly love them. And I remember this. I always knew since I was 16 years old that I was going to be a pastor. And I remember one time I was with the Lord. I was praying. It was a tough season in my life. And the Lord said to me, Albert, will you still love me? And will you still serve me? If I tell you right now that you're never going to be a pastor. And I say, Lord, if it is you, I'll give you my life, even if I would never make it to be a pastor. I'll give you my life. I had to die to what he has for me. To encounter the love that I had for him. You would never love God the way that he loves you if you continue to chase after him for what he has. We love him for who he is. You want to know why? Because right now you want to be holy, you want to commit because you know that he could bless you, that he could prosper you, that he could give you the right woman of God and everything. And you're doing it. You come to church every Sunday. Lord, I know one day I'm going to open my eyes. I'm going to have that woman of God next to me. Some of you guys have been praying the prayer. Glory to God. But would you still show up to church if 30 years from now you still have not found that woman of God? Because if you come to church to find your woman, you miss the whole point of what a church is all about. If you come to church... 
to find your miracle. To find your deliverance. To find healing. You miss what church is all about. Because church is about having an intimate relation, a love relation with God. You will love him unconditional, just like he loves you. Miracle or no miracle, I love you, Lord. Blessing or no blessing, I love you, Lord. Healing or no healing, I love you, Lord. Mm. If you bless me or you don't bless me. If I love you the way that you love me, I have to be willing to give my life for you the same way that he gave his life for me. That's why people don't want anything with churches. Because we preach a gospel that we don't leave. Because the gospel of God is the demonstration of the love of God. Everything that you do is about the love for God, not for yourself. Every time I stand into this pulpit, I'm like, Lord, make sure they don't see me. I want them to see you. It is about him. Why do I speak about him? Because I love him. So I know I didn't deserve his love. But because he loves me first, I love him back. Did you know that none of us had the capacity to love like God loves us? Unless we are born again. We were created according to God's image and likeness. So we were created in the form of God. So we had love and we were loved just like God was love. Hey, are you here? So if we were like God's image and likeness, that means that if we have not sinned, people would look at us and they would see love. But the moment sinful nature came in, it polluted it polluted the love of God in us. And it, takes, it took for Jesus to come and die for us. And us to be born again in order for us to go back to that love. Are you here? So we are all the product of his love. Can I tell you something this morning? I want you guys to look at me. You are not an incident. There was a purpose why you were born. You are God's idea. Every once in a while, since I, I, since I love him, I could be open with God. How many of you guys have ever been open with God? Well, I'd be open with God. I would say, in your idea, couldn't you create me a little bit skinnier, Lord? He was like, well, that was never my idea. Uh, <laughs> son, come on. <laughs> Listen, God loves you. You are not an accident. He has your pattern. In other words, no one else can make you. The world could try to form you, but cannot make you. When you encounter the love of God, when you encounter God and you know that you are loved regardless of what you've been through, you begin to change, not because of what God has for you, but because you have never encountered such love. Therefore, you will strive to love with the same love. I'm going to tell you something. The cure to lack of identity is not deliverance. The cure to rejection is not deliverance. The cure to suicide is not deliverance. 
the cure to all these things that you are going through is not to lock yourself in a room and open your heart to somebody. Yes, that will help. But the answer is not in a deliverance. The answer is in the love of God. If you understand how much God loves you, you will not go against your life. If you understand how much God loves you, when someone looks at you and says, Oh, you're good for nothing. I was like, forget you. Because I know who I am. I know who loves me. And you might not love me, but I love myself. Because when you know that God loves you, you will love yourself in such a manner that it don't matter how people try to put you down, they won't have enough strength to get it done. Are you here? Jesus. So listen. The church, we owe the, we owe the people to know about the love of God. I owe my children to understand what the love of God is all about. You owe your family. They need this generation. We owe this generation for them to have an encounter with the love of God. You say you love them and you don't preach the gospel to them. You are depriving them from true love. Showing up to a birthday is not love. Bringing them a gift on the birthday is not love. Well, you say, well, Pastor, don't we give gifts as a demonstration of love? Yes. But before you show any natural love, you need to show the spiritual love. You need to show the love of God. Your family needs to know. That God loves them unconditional. Pastor, but can, you don't know my family. They reject me. Well, if you're concerned about the rejection, you're not loving with the love of God. Because the love of God doesn't suffer rejection. The love of God doesn't have fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. So why don't you tell people about the love of God? If you are afraid, you don't love God with a proper love. Because the right love doesn't give a penny if people reject you or not. True love doesn't care. It's not afraid of what people might think about you. I love you just because. Take it or leave it, but I love you. See, people, we have a form of love. I got 10 more minutes to finish. Buke that clock in the name of Jesus. Come on. <laughs> People have a form of love. But true love comes to us when we are born again. Say with me, born again. again. See, so you can give natural, human, physical, sensory love. But that is not true love. That is not true love. I love when my wife kisses me. I love it. And I feel some sort of love. But you know what? I feel more love when she forgives me when I say something that offends her. Well, Pastor, have you ever offended your wife? Have you not been coming to services? <laughs> we offend daily. And we get offended as well. But why do we continue to be together 24 years today? <laughs> Listen. Because of the love of God. Happy anniversary, babe. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for putting up with me, for giving me two beautiful children. 
for doing that papa la wankaina is so good. <laughs> Jeez. All right. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I had to throw it out there. She hates it. She hates it, but when you love somebody, you, like, you love to bother them as well. <laughs> Listen. True love comes by having an encounter with God. The love of God is not to remain in us. It must be shared with others. And God, he will pour that love the moment you are born again. You don't need to go to a school to learn love. The moment you come to the altar or in the street, it doesn't have to be in the altar, but in the street, wherever you were preached the gospel. When you say, Jesus, come into my heart. And you realize that it don't matter how much of a screw up you are. He loves you. That love comes inside of you and it changes your life. There was an occasion I was with the youth back in Miami. And there was a kid with do these two fingers. He was pulling his trachea out. He was purpose, purple, killing himself. There was a bunch of people casting out demons. Bunch of people ministering, delivering to the kid, and he would not let go. And the Lord just told me, go give him a hug and tell him that I love him. I told the people, can I please, we have tried everything, can I please give him a hug? Can I, can I, can I? And I just went, listen, I want you to know that God loves you. And the kid let go, and he said, thank you, Lord. Color came back to his body. He began to breathe no more again. Because the love of God not only sets people free, but changes people's lives. <laughs> Receiving God's true love, it will give you the capacity to love other people generally. Not fake. There's a lot of fake love, even in the house of God. Even in the house of God. Hmm. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. You cannot acquire his love. You only receive it. Are you hearing me? You only receive it. And it's received by grace. There's no price. None of us could pay for love. At least not the love of God. There's some other loves out there that people pay for. Well, that's definitely not the love of God, so stay away from that one. But the love of God is priceless. Did you hear what I say? The love of God is priceless. You cannot purchase it.